about single bundle PCL reconstruction and how to do it. 28 year old gentleman RTA with a direct force on the upper end of the tibia and a PCL tear can be seen on the MRI in the sagittal section and the tibia can be translated so much posteriorly on a stress x-ray indicating a PCL tear. Now when you do uh, anterior draw force the ACL can be seen getting taut on an arthroscopic image indicating that it's a floppy and not torn ACL because of the PCL tear. And here you can see it quite taut on an anterior draw test when probed. The knee joint has four ligaments. The ACL in front, the PCL at the back, the MCL on the inside and the LCL on the outside. The PCL prevents the tibia or the leg bone from going backwards on the femur. The PCL takes origin from the medial aspect of the notch and goes all the way backwards and attaches at the back of the tibia almost at its center. Working at the back of the knee involves making a transeptal portal. That means you first make a posterior medial portal looking at the back of the knee and then under vision a posterior lateral portal is made after removing the septum which is at the back of the knee and at the center dividing the posterior compartment into two halves. Once this is done introducing the scope from either the posterior medial or posterior lateral portal gives you a full view of the back of the tibia and where you need to drill the tibia at its foot. The tibial jig is introduced through the notch all the way to the back of the knee and it is fixed on the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. Now drilling happens from the anteromedial aspect of the tibia all the way posteriorly as can be seen where the jig ends at the back of the knee. From here a guide wire comes out which is then over drilled with the graph diameter drill bit. Drilling at the femoral footprint involves making a high anterolateral portal to view the medial aspect of the notch and using a low anterolateral portal to drill at the footprint. This gives us an end-on view of the medial aspect of the notch and the PCL footprint. Now the graft is passed from anteromedially, goes all the way backwards, exits through the tibial part of the footprint, goes anteriorly through to the medial side of the notch. How is this done? It is done by delivering two ethibond loops, one from the femoral footprint and the other from the tibial footprint at the back through one portal to make it ultimately one ethibond loop that exits from the anteromedial aspect of the tibia that pulls the graft upwards into the femur. The graft is fixed with a tight rope on the medial aspect of the femur and a post or an interference screw on the tibia. Moral entry point is then marked. A space is made between the PCL and the remnant to go to the back of the knee. A high posteromedial portal is then made via LP needle guidance. A vertical portal is usually made and a switching stick introduced over which a cannula threaded in. A transeptal portal is then created after clearing the septum from the notch. Not all surgeons may do this. It is technically demanding but gives you a better visualization of the back of the knee and makes the PCL reconstruction a lot easier when you do this. Now visualizing the knee from the posterolateral portal and working from the posteromedial portal, the tibial footprint of the PCL is identified and whatever tissue around it is uh, removed using a radio frequency device to improve visualization of the footprint. Then a tibial jig is introduced through the notch 
to the point where you have to drill it. Be careful to spend time on this location as this improves isometricity. It is then drilled with a guide wire and this jig has a trap that traps the guide wire as this area has vessels behind so it is imperative to be careful. You can see the wire now trapped by the jig. This is then over drilled using a 9mm drill bit keeping the wire secured using a part of the jig. This is a trick that prevents any unforeseen injuries. Pin with a fiber wire loop is then introduced to the tibial tunnel and the loop delivered through the posteromedial portal. Now doing a transeptal approach gives you a good visualization of this. This is then pulled forward through a passport cannula anteriorly using a suture manipulator and you can here see how the wire goes all the way back. Then the femoral footprint is then drilled. I like to use a high use a high anterolateral portal to view the femoral footprint and drill with a low anterolateral portal as this gives an end on view of the femoral footprint of the PCL and you know exactly where you're drilling. The bead pin is followed by drilling with a 4.5 mm drill bit, tunnel measured and then did differential drilling done with the size appropriate for the graph diameter. In this case being 9. So it goes all the way for at least a 50 to 20 mm graft in the tunnel. Now both loops are shuttled into one that comes out through the tibial tunnel distally. Now through the loop, the tight rope is shuttled through. Viewing it from the high anterolateral portal, I like to see my button flip first. Now this adjustable loop lets you make the loop length very long so that you can see the button flip first. Now you can see it flip. Once you've flipped it, then the milking process starts that pulls the graft up through the tibial tunnel into the femoral tunnel. You can now see the graft being milked up, viewing it from the posterolateral portal. So that's the advantage of this, that you get a good end-on view of the posterior end of the tibia and can actually see your graft coming through the tunnel easily as it is milked up. The PCL can now be seen moving up the tibial tunnel into the femoral tunnel as it is milked up gradually till the mark that indicates adequate amount of graft has passed through the femoral tunnel is passed. The graft can be seen all the way from the femoral tunnel all the way back into the tibial tunnel and here you can see it being milked all the way up. The whole graft morphology can now be seen here all the way from the front and then looking posterolaterally you can see the graft entering from the tibial tunnel all the way anteriorly. When a stress x-ray done post-op there is no posterior translation. A CT scan with 3D reconstruction shows anatomical positions of the tunnels. Three months the ligamentization process has started on an MRI. The man is able to jump on one leg. 